Scripps News tonight. Uh, Norman Lear really was a TV legend. His shows were watched by millions and in some cases feared by bigots. Norman Lear managed to bring two races together at a time when TV had just emerged from being black and white. We learned yesterday that Norman Lear died. He was 101, but his legacy will live on in episodes of All in the Family, The Jefferson, Sanford and Son, and Maud. Shows that tackled are many social taboos, racism, interracial marriage, sexism, pioneering a medium in ways that few have done since then. Scripps News National Correspondent Clayton Sandell has more on the life and legacy of Norman Lear. I'm Norman Lear. I've been making television for many years. My characters have lived a multitude of lives as have I. Living to the age of 101, legendary writer, director, and producer Norman Lear was nearly as old as television itself, the medium he helped transform. Lear created iconic sitcoms like All in the Family, Maude, and The Jeffersons, groundbreaking for bringing social issues of the 1970s and 80s into the homes of as many as 120 million viewers a week. Well, it began with All in the Family and... Uh, the desire to move a black family next door. So you had an Archie and the reaction of uh, a black family moving in. No topic was off limits. Race, gender, sexuality, crime, or abortion. Lear's shows reflected the fears of a middle-class America feeling the ground shift. From Archie Bunker's living room in Queens to Fred Sanford's junkyard in Watts, he has employed the power of humor in the service of human understanding. Lear won six Emmy Awards and countless other honors, including the National Medal of Arts. Off screen, he was also a staunch liberal activist, founding People for the American Way to oppose censorship and uphold religious liberty and voting rights. Lear also kept busy to the end, producing live television specials and even a 2017 revival of his sitcom, One Day at a Time, for Netflix. I want to make an announcement. Lear said the key to a long life and 75-year career was laughter and using it to enrich the lives of others. Anyway, I want a planet and I want a safe climate for, for the six kids that brighten my life and the four grandchildren behind them. Clayton Sandell, Scripps News. The person you're about to meet really doesn't need an introduction. For five years, DeMond Wilson was one of the most recognizable faces anywhere in America. He played Lamont on Sanford and Sons. He is the author of the book Second Banana, the bittersweet memoirs of the Sanford and Sons years. Um, when we were talking, by the way, about Norman Lear, and by the way, thanks for being with us tonight, I pointed out what it felt like to be an African American growing up in that age of enlightenment. I had two heroes, Muhammad Ali, who said anything that he wanted to when he wanted to, and Norman Lear, who allowed characters like you to say so many things that African Americans wanted to say to white America. Your thoughts on, on that show and those shows? Um, well, you know, I, I did, a, uh, I, 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 um, I did a, an episode on All in the Family, and I, I saw the feed that you had. It, never, it didn't show mine. Uh, <clears throat> I came to uh, California to do a film and uh, a film with Sidney Poitier called The Organization, and I did the film. And one Saturday night, I got a phone call from my uh, man manager, David Graham at the time, and he said, John Rich, who is the producer, director of All in the Family, wants you to do an episode on the show. And I said, what is All in the Family? And he said, it's the number one show on television. And I said, I have no desire to do television. It, you know, you get typecast in it, and I'm a theater film actor. I, I don't want to do television. And he said, well, DeMond, you know, you're new in, in town. People know of your reputation, but this is the number one show. So watch it. I did. I called him back at the cessation of the of the program, and I said, I wouldn't do that for all the money in China. It's, <laughs> the character's despicable. What I saw then, and it was a funny, funny show. There's no question about that. A brilliant cast. I think Rob Reiner is probably one of the finest directors in the 20th and 21st century. Um, Carol O'Connor is the only person that could have played Archie Bunker as 
Red Fox was the only person that could have played Fred Sanford. Sally Struthers was brilliant in that role, perfect casting. And Gene Stapleton, I remember from the 40s and 50s, and, and feature films, B films. And so I, I, I said, okay, I'll, I'll do it. And, and, and I did it. But what I saw then, and after hearing Norman speak about his political position, I, 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 I was right in what I thought. And what I thought when I watched All in the Family was that this was the beginning of the dissolution of the patriarchal system. Hey, DeMond, since you brought and it I up. And I say that with... Yeah, since you brought it up. Look, can I just finish the talk? Go ahead, go ahead. Can I finish the talk? On the heels of that came Married with Children, and it further went one step, one step, one step into where we are now. This, What we're witnessing now is the evolution of what Norman Lear started. And, and, and as I said before, I reiterate, it was a brilliant show. Norman Lear was a master builder. He had very little to do with Sanford and Son other than he was in partnership at the time with Bud Yorkin, who was the executive producer of Sanford and Son. It was called Tandem Productions, which, as you know or not, it was a, a two-seat bicycle front and back. And they finally split. But Norman did not have anything really to do with Sanford and Son. Both shows were taken from... Uh, uh, All in the Family was taken from Till Death Do Us Part, a British show. And Sanford and Son was taken from the number one British show at the time called Steptoe and Son. So he had very... I met Norman. He took me out to dinner a few times and, and we talked. But I didn't really know Norman. I knew of his work. Norman Lear was... He was a visionary. I'll say that. Because he saw, and after hearing the feed on his position politically, I, I was absolutely correct. Um, Norman Lear, I send my condolences to his family, to the Lear family. And Norman was a pioneer, as was myself and others of that era. I'm sorry, you, you wanted to say No, something. I was just going to point out that, that while you were talking, we were showing all these scenes of you, uh, and, I, and I have a clip, by the way, that we're going to play in a second, but I want to I wanna play this one, because for the uninformed, this was the moment that later became known as the kiss that was seen around the world. This is when Sammy Davis Jr. kissed Archie Bunker. Take a look. Mr. Davis, this is an unexpected pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Can I get a picture, oh, Mr. No, no, Davis? Come on, Munson, no pictures. Oh, no, this one is for me. Mr. Munson, would you stand over there? I want one picture taken with Archie Bunker, my friend, and me. You want me? Oh, yes. Now, on three, okay? One, two, three. <laughs> it bears pointing out one-third of all TV sets in America were watching that show. How powerful was that moment? For me? Yeah. Not at all. Um, Sammy Davis Jr. kissed Archie Bunker. Cleavon and I pulled a gun on him and robbed his house. So um, <laughs> <laughs> times were changing. Sammy Davis Jr. was old school. Sammy Davis Jr. did not have, have talented, talented, no question about it. But his era was over. The Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra era was coming to an end. Uh, Red and I were the... Uh, uh, the beginning of the of the new regime. We were part of the 50 years of, of the golden years of Hollywood, but Sammy's era was just about finished. From when Sammy hung on there, he did Wilson's show. He did all. He tried to get on Sanford and Son, and I told the producers, I said, "Come on, Lena Horne was one thing, but Sammy Davis, come on, he did all in the family. What is he going around doing all the shows?" I said, "It makes no sense at all." So it had a different meaning. F for me, I would not have done the show until I read the script. And they said, you break into the bunker home, you rob them, and you and you pull a gun on Archie. And I said, where do I sign? I remember the so show. So I'm coming from a different place. Yes, in 1960, I, I, I served in the Republic of Vietnam from 66 to 68. When I did All in the Family, I had only been home for two and a half years. I was greeted with jeers, calling me a murderer. People spat on me one day. I was walking down the street, had my uniform on. Um, the world was changing. The, the, I hate to use a cliche, but the hippie movement was in full swing. And in 68, 67, 68, I was overseas in the jungle 
When I came back home, the government was the enemy. Everybody was coming against Richard Milhouse Nixon. And uh, the kids were protesting, started up at 8 Ashbury. And so this show was so popular because I have news for you. There are more people like Archie Bunker then in America than there weren't. That was why that show was so popular, because I, I remember hearing people say in those days, Archie's saying things that we would love to say, but we can't say it. And that's the truth if I never speak it again. So, Damon, uh, from a personal standpoint, Norman Lear gave a black actor, you, a megaphone during one of the most transitional periods in American history. I'm curious, do you still feel like no, you, you have... Do you still feel like you have that megaphone? And if you don't, what happened? When you say megaphone, I don't understand what you mean. Your character was allowed to say things that if most people said them in any office space in America, they would have been fired. No, Fred Sanford said things. I, I was a straight man. I don't know. Fred Sanford was the one that said the things that, that, that America did not want to hear. But black people knew that what he was saying was true. I don't hide behind false anything. When I, when I came home from Vietnam, now people say to me, thank you for your service. I said, you're 54 years too late. Because when I came home, I was spat on. I was called a murderer. It wasn't a war. It was a policing action. I did not want to go. I dropped out of college to do a play in Washington, D.C. And I was there for two weeks in rehearsal. My mom called me and said, you need to come home. And I thought something had happened to my dad. She said, no, I don't want to tell you over the phone. Come home. I went home and I saw the letter. It said, your friends and neighbors have selected you for the United States Army. Now, what they were doing, they were sending young black men from poor areas to that war. It was a form of genocide. Now I have shirts and sweaters and jackets that were made in Vietnam. It just makes no sense. Yeah, I want to. I'm, I'm, I'm running out of time. I got to do this because I promised you I was going to do it. Uh, I want to talk about the fact that he also reinvigorated a career. Many believe that Red Fox paved the way for Eddie Murphy, uh, Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle. This is that scene from Sanford and Sons. Take a look. Tomorrow at noon at NBC at Studio Three. Red Fox will appear in person to kick off the first annual Red Fox Lookalike Contest to promote his new movie, Wonders Are Pain of the Glass. <laughs> hey, 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 Lamar. Hey, son. Whoa, whoa, Pop. Hey, no kidding. <laughs> Red Fox going to be in person? Yeah, Red Fox, my idol. I love him. <laughs> I love it. I love the way he spells his name with two D's and two X's. <laughs> I wonder why he does that. I don't know why he uses two D's, but I saw his nightclub act once, <laughs> and I know why they got all them X's. <laughs> that being said, give me your best 30 seconds on Norman Lear. Regarding, uh, he was a giant in the industry. I mean, he's a legend. Um, but I, like I said before, I reiterate, I had, I had l little contact with Norman in those days because he and the producer of Sanford and Son parted ways. And so I, I didn't see Norman very much after that. Um, he didn't come around very much after, after, after he and, and Bud York and uh, split. So I, the only thing I can say about Norman is that, you know, his legacy will live on. There will never be another one. But that era is over now. And I, I must correct something. Eddie Murphy and those guys, Red Fox paved the way for them because they did blue humor also. And they saw that a guy who was known for blue humor was now on television. That's Come on. Got to leave it there. Thanks for being with us tonight. Mm.